So in this video, we're going to go over the fact that big data is spread across multiple servers and some of the problems this causes and how functional programming it can be a solution. So when data volumes are so large, the processing of this data has to be distributed across more than one machine. Now, this can present unique problems when analysing it using traditional programming methods. And we mentioned this in the last video. So uh, we've got a, an abstracted diagram here um, where, for example, we have maybe hundreds of sensors all uh, out around the country and they're collecting weather information. So this is a, a distributed system for collecting data on weather. And we could be collecting... Um, amount of daylight hours in parts of the country, the temperature, the amount of precipitation, wind speeds, pressure, and, and hundreds of other. And all this data is coming in in, in different formats and, and diff using different numerical values. There's so much data being collected that it has to be stored, as we said, across multiple servers. Now, one solution to help with big data is functional programming. There are three main benefits that you need to know about for your exam as to why functional programming makes it easier to handle and analyse big data. The first is statelessness. So functions always have some kind of side effect. If they modify anything about the calling programme, for example, changing global variable. Functional languages, however, are stateless and what this means is that nothing about a functional program is dependent on how often it's called or in the order and it's this last bit in bold which is really important to remember this therefore results in code being much easier to write correctly it's easier for the programmer to understand and predict the behavior the next is higher order functions so in functional programming, we have higher order functions. And a higher order function is any function which does at least one of the following. It takes one or more functions as its input, or it outputs a function. And again, here's the important bit for the exam. Higher order functions are easily parallelized. And that means more than one processor can work on a different part of a large data set at the same time without changing any other part. And of course, this is very handy with big data. As we've already said, our data is spread and distributed across multiple servers and pieces of hardware. And finally, there's the immutable nature, uh, immutable nature of data structures with functional programming. Functional programming languages are immutable, and what we mean by that is an object can't change or be modified once you've created it. There's no way, for example, during a program to say x becomes equal to 2, which is something you're probably very familiar with from procedural programming. Now here's the important bit. This means that parallel processing, again, can be extremely easy. The same function will always return the same result. Functions can be executed in any order, and if they share parameters, they don't need to fear about the data being altered due to another function being run first. Now, we've talked quite a bit here about some of the key features of functional programming, and this is actually the focus of the next two topics. So if you're a bit unclear, wait until you've watched those videos, and then you can come back and apply that in a bit more context to big data.